The teenage video game nerd is not real. He's a character. Some of the games that he plays may cause a person to lose their mind, harm someone, or destroy property. Whatever you do, don't try this at home. During the early 60s, a company known as Milton Bradley was having success with games like The Game of Life, Chutes and Ladders, and Quizmos. But however, one of the most popular games was Operation. It was released in 1965 and was created by a man named John Spinello, who invented the game in 1964 in university, and it became a worldwide success and inspired many pieces of hardware for the game. It was usually marketed as a dopey game, where you're the dopey doctor, but they decided to change it, calling it the skill game where you're the doctor. And it came with a buzzer, if you touch the sides, you'll go boom. What I mean by boom, the, the game will buzz at all times. The first problem was that the game was marketed as a dopey game. Yeah, dopey. This thing isn't dopey. You can barely find a comfortable way to play this thing in the park. It's not even portable. I mean, you can't play it in the car. I learned that the hard way. And now that I think about it, I wouldn't want to play this thing in public anyway. I'll look like an idiot. Really? Let's think about this. It's just, just a game with electricity. But the game is obviously a guy on a board. To the game, that translates it into a patient on a bed. But there's no bed. There's, there's no pillow, no railing. It's not even a real hospital. And all you've got are these tweezers which are connected to a wire which, which activates the buzzer. Well, basically, mine doesn't have the buzzer because it broke easily. Yeah, that's the problem with the old game. It breaks easily, and most of them don't have the buzzer. So it's basically like a cheat code to me. So, let's take a look at the items. But first, let's take a look at the box. Well, basically, the box stinks. I mean, look at this. You got Albert Einstein putting the tweezers on the man's leg. There's a guy getting ready to operate him. There's a young girl holding a wrench, and there's a young boy holding a bucket of water. So, so basically it's for, for one or more players. And also there's a age guideline that says age is six and up. Well, maybe it's because if kids under six would have played this, it would have hurt their ears because of the loud noise. And also it says perform a successful operation and you earn money. Make a mistake and you set off the, an alarm. Sense does that make? So, as I said, let's talk about the elements in the game. First off, we've got Broken Heart. Well, basically, it's just a game. So, basically, it's just a heart with a crack on it. It doesn't even resemble the cardiovascular heart. I mean, well, basically, the definition of Broken Heart would be sadness. But I don't get it. Did this man actually break his heart? And so, let's move on to writer's cramp. So, writer's cramp is basically a pencil and not a cramp. But, it hardly even looks like a pencil. I mean, look at this. It looks like a pin needle for all I know. And so, basically, the definition for writer's cramp is that you write too hard or you feel pain in your wrist. But, basically, they should have had a cramp instead of a pencil. I mean, people are going to think that he stuck a pencil in his wrist. Charlie horse. 
So basically, Charlie Horse is a horse going inside of a man's leg. But basically, the definition for Charlie Horse is you have a muscle cramp in your leg. Not an actual horse. I mean, what were they thinking? They must have been eating sugar when they came up with this game. So, water on the knee. Yeah, water on the knee is right. So, water on the knee is basically a bucket of water poured on the guy's knee. But basically, water on the knee is where you have blood in your knee. Not a bucket of water. Man, does this game have terrible puns. Wrenched ankle is where the guy had a wrench in his ankle. But seriously, wrenched ankle is where you twist your ankle. Or something like that. I think it's where you twist your ankle with the game. You can't really tell. You know what bothers me? Butterflies in the stomach. Yeah, it's basically where the man stuck a butterfly in his stomach. I mean, what were they thinking? Butterflies in the stomach is basically embarrassing moments or feeling shy or nervous. Not an actual butterfly! Spare ribs. So basically, this one is basically just a pair of ribs. I mean, don't ribs support your chest? Well, they do, then why do you need to take them away? It's unremarkable. Ankle bone connected to knee bone. So basically it's just a rubber band, unlike a plastic piece like the other ones are. And so, basically it's just a rubber band. And this thing could break easily and doesn't age well. So does the tweezer, it doesn't age well either. Wishbone. So basically it's just a bone, or a wishbone, on the man's chest as it's located next to broken heart and on top of Adam's apple, which I don't have because some of the parts are missing. Like, funny bone. So basically, the only three elements that, that show body parts are broken heart, spare ribs, and funny bone. These are the only elements in the game that show off body parts. But wishbone is basically on a turkey. You have to get the wishbone in a turkey, not a human. And his nose activates the buzzer, but basically it's broken off, so I have no questioning to playing the game with some batteries. And I have no charge of replacing the cable or the tweezers! <laughs> Does that make me happy? <laughs> it doesn't. Well, tell you the truth, it's true that the game could break easily over time due to its age. But basically, there are many variants of this game. Like there was, an, there was a Shrek, there was a SpongeBob, there was an Incredible Hulk operation, Star Wars operation. And also there was a handheld operation game. And for the, 30, for the 40th anniversary, there was a Game Boy Advance game, which had two other games, Simon and Mousetrap. And there was also a video game translation for the Nintendo Wii called Family Game Night 2, which is the sequel to the first Family Game Night that was released in 2008. And also, and another translation was on television called Operation Sam Dunk on the show Family Game Night. So, I don't know how did this game inspire a franchise of its own. What's next? Is there going to be a Superman operation? I don't know in the future. So I can just make my own operation for sure. Speaking of other versions, I made one myself with a printer. It's a Mega Man operation game. So basically it takes elements from the Mega Man games and you have to operate on the character. So basically this isn't going to be easy because it has paper cuts. And if you touch the sides, it's the same thing with the original operation. It's just... TRASH! JUNK! DIE! That 
that's it. I had enough. I want to press my nose with a screwdriver while I poke my eyes in. Don't be game. It's extreme garbage! It's extreme garbage! What a load of garbage that I wasted my time on this game! Well, all thing I could say is, is that Operation, it's a good game. So good as therapy. From the two games that I reviewed, the original Incarnation was the greatest one. What more could you ask for? Remember how I told you that the game was created by a man named John Spinello? Well, basically, I can't find a picture of him, so you have to use your imagination.